Right, this is a little Richard Kell of the US plane. I've got one of these to send away today. I don't know if I'll be making any more after this. Perhaps with hell to make. Uh, here's an example. Here we have a, a forward part of the body. Two prongs fit into the little accurate slots. And these have got a bit of slop on them. Oh god, it's got to be no more. That's not even two thou. That's somewhere between one and two thou. But unfortunately, it's not got the registration or the accuracy that I like. So, as it says in the bag, forgive the bad language, it's a shit fit, which means it is reject. All that to be scrapped. This is not going to go in the bin though, I think it's just going to lie as an ornament on the shelf to remind me to be more vigilant in the future. Anyway, this one's uh, tip top, it passes everything that, that I want it to, and I'm even supplying him with a little shorter clamp screw if he wants it. Though I like the long one, it's a very convenient handle, I kind of seem to get that through to some people's heads. That's so handy to grip it by. Um, special purpose slotted washers at the back help to stop the blued steel screws nibbling into your fingers. There's a pack of the blued steel screws and what characterises my work is that all my threads are a good fit. The only slop fit actually of a thread here is the commercial cap head screw that I use to work into the uh, cap iron. That's because I wanted the high tensile properties of that cap head as something that's going to be unloosened and tightened again and again. Got a little stainless steel pin. What's very clever as well is a registration pin on the cap iron so that when you slot down it'll only go to one position and then tighten. It's foolproof. And there's the iron. The iron's very good. It's uh, hard and tempered by me. It's Toolmaker's 01 gauge plate and it's lapped flat on a diamond lapping plate, a tool room lapping plate, which in itself is very, very flat, not just a bit of old steel. It's a difference. And it's as if my number one guide was made for this. Obviously when you fit it in you've got to get the correct dimension from the stainless rod to the end of the cutting edge. That's where you make a little jig, wish you boys, and that fits perfectly on the stone, or whatever means you use to sharpen. It's as if it was made for it. And of course your edge is perfectly square, which it has to be to function in this little device. There we go again, tighten up you get your correct projection. The way I set these things is to set it on a piece of paper, a piece of A4, a diary or whatever, and let the iron fall down as far as it can and then tighten and lo and behold you usually find that you've got the right projection it's amazing, just let it nip into the paper it'll usually go in about a thou then tighten up and that's it so as you can see it's got a two part body, there's a patent application on that and uh, you can get this thing to cut a one thou shaving if you want it generally works about one and a half thou if you measure it with a micrometer and um, that's it, I think the man will be very pleased I hope he is <laughs>